Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is perfectly legitimate to hold to the historical accuracy of the Barabbas story in the text, but that is not my view. So my comments this morning are based on that premise. For one thing, there is no historical record of any custom of releasing prisoners at Passover or any other time outside of the Gospel accounts. And furthermore, what external documentation we have about Pontius Pontius Pilate paints a picture of a ruthless tyrant capable of crucifying hundreds of people in a single day, a man engaged in the brutal repression of a rebellious province of the Roman Empire. It is therefore easy to doubt that such a man could be bullied by a small crowd of unarmed civilians into releasing a known enemy of the state. So that leads me to ask the question, why would the early Christians add Barabbas to the crucifixion story. One possibility is anti-Semitism. We know that in the early years of Christianity, the Christians and the Jews were feuding bitterly with each other. Think of Christians and Muslims in Africa today, even though both groups were oppressed by the Romans. So according to this line of thinking, when Christians shifted the blame for the death of Jesus from the Romans to the Jews, it served two purposes. One, it fostered hatred against the Jews, and two, it made the Christian story seem less treasonous against the Romans. Now, I don't endorse this view completely, but I am convinced that early church anti-Semitism was responsible for at least some creative editing of the Gospel narrative. For example, in today's reading, the rather harsh bit where the Jews yell, His blood be upon us and upon our children, appears only in Matthew's Gospel. And this makes me suspect that Matthew was just taking a swipe. But that being acknowledged, I don't think that anti-Semitism is necessarily the reason, and certainly not the only reason, for the Barabbas story. It is certainly not the reason for creative editing in general. The evangelists were writing Gospels, not history texts. So they regularly played fast and loose with the facts in order to make theological points. In particular, Conflict between Jesus and the religious leaders is a consistent theme throughout all the Gospels, but its main meaning is to warn us against becoming so attached to our own understanding of our religion that we refuse to listen and in fact shoot the messenger when God tries to correct us or drive us deeper into its own meaning. So despite the fact that there is some anti-Semitism in the text, I think the fundamental value of the Barabbas story stands. Because it's not about the Jews in particular, but rather humanity in general. In fact, it's about us. Because when faced with the choice between Barabbas and Jesus, we generally pick Barabbas. If we were being oppressed by a foreign power, would we really want the guy who says, love your enemy and turn the other cheek? Or would we prefer the proven revolution? If we lived in Central America in the 60s, would we prefer Oscar Romero or Che Guevara? When we raise our children, do we teach them to love their bullies? Or do we teach them to hit the bully so hard and fast that their head spins and the problem will therefore be solved? When we are in a dispute, do we seek out a mediator or a litigator? And as I list these examples, I know full well that pacifism does not always result in peace. I know that some enemies are implacable, and I know that there are people in the world whose lives are consumed by evil. Sometimes it is morally justifiable to hire a litigator or confront a bully, or even in extreme cases, to take up arms. Evil is not a solvable problem but a systemic feature of human existence. I know this. This is precisely why we choose Barabbas. It is precisely why Jesus had to die. Now, that might seem depressing enough, 
but it gets worse. It gets worse when we appreciate that Barabbas' name provides another clue as to what he symbolizes. Remember that Bar means son, Simon Bar Jonah, Simon the son of Jonah. So Jesus Barabbas is Jesus Bar Abbas. Abbas is a name that was in use at the time, still is today. Mahmoud Abbas carries it. But the S at the end is optional. It's the same name as Abba, which of course means Father. So Jesus Bar Abbas means Jesus, Son of the Father. This means that the crowd is screaming for the guy named Jesus, Son of the Father while condemning the real Jesus, Son of the Father, to death. Coincidence? Possibly, if the story is historical. But if the story about the story came about through creative editing, not likely. And I'm not sure exactly what it was intended to mean, but I do note that the true meaning of a sinister act of power is inevitably cloaked in the language of virtue. Hitler liberated Poland. After World War II, when the U.S. military changed gears into pursuing an aggressive and expansionary Cold War, it ceased to be called the Department of War and became the Department of Defense. Crimea has just been liberated. And don't even get me started about the Fair Elections Act. <laughs> But most damningly, we took our own hatred of the Jews and we inscribed it into our holiest texts. It's not anti-Semitism, it's holy writ. And I give you these examples in order to emphasize the magnitude of the problem of evil. We cannot escape it. We cannot solve it. It is endemic to human existence. Not only do we choose the evil and desire the evil, but we desire good and still choose evil because it's the least bad option. All of this is true. And where I leave you today is with this appreciation of the magnitude of the problem of evil, only now can we start to get a sense of the magnitude of the gift of the resurrection. Only when we appreciate the magnitude of the problem of evil are we, are we able to appreciate the magnitude of the gift of the resurrection. With that in mind, I commend to you a devout, prayerful, and penitent Holy Week. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.